a KQED television production. Another umami bomb. <laughs> umami bomb. <laughs> Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by Total Wine and More offers over 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits with specialists on hand to provide advice on any item. Now open in Mountain View, Pleasant Hill, in Fremont. La Tour Angel Artisan Oils, French-inspired and handcrafted in Northern California. La Tour Angel creates natural, healthy cooking oils that add new flavor to everyday dishes. Sutter Health CPMC, investing in community care for more than 150 years, including two new smart hospitals. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Mattress systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. At Adeline and Ashby in Berkeley. Online at sleepworks.com. Integrated Resources Group has a vast selection of epic porcelain slabs and pentel quartz surfaces for today's modern designs. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, customer success manager Jess O'Connor grew up savoring the perfumed flavors of her grandmother's <laughs> Persian cooking. Fragrance from the kitchen led to a life of dining around the bay. She's now visited more than 267 restaurants and counting. Radio talk show host and stand-up comic Maureen Langan is a Jersey girl and proud of it. Her mom came from Ireland, bringing traditional recipes, lots of stories, and a quick wit to the dinner table. But first, head of operations, Mar Ronquillo's hard-working mom came from the Philippines. Hungry in her absence, he would stand on a stool at the stove to make eggs, igniting his passion for cooking, eating, and making award-winning donuts. His eatery is a family-owned Mexican place with dishes that wow and contrast the nondescript exterior. So be prepared for a surprise at Los Arquitos Restaurant in Vallejo. We bought our business 12 years ago. It's always been my dad's dream to own his own business. My name is Dora Rubio. And my name is Lucero Miller, and we are the owner of Los Arquitos Restaurant. I am the eldest, and I am the waitress, and then my two sisters, Alejandra and Alma, they work in the kitchen from the beginning. It was just, it's always been us. For my sisters, my dad used to chase them out of the kitchen because they were so little. And my dad was like, no, you're too young, you're too young. And they've been there ever since. My dad, he's the head chef. A lot of the recipes are his own. So it's nothing's written on a book. They're just the way he likes to eat food. That's the way his recipes come out. El importante que todo es fresco. Mama said the most important thing is that all our food is fresh. All the recipes are traditional. They both are from different places in Mexico. My mom is from Nayarit and my dad's from Jalisco. So they've tried to bring both flavors together. The core of our business are our locals. They've been coming here since we opened. My mom said that when she serves the food, she loves just seeing the smile on the customers when they're eating something they love. She just loves serving her customers. <laughs> All right, this is, you. how often do you go to this restaurant? A lot. A lot. I really go a lot. Yeah. More often than not, dinner, but I go there for lunch. And before we even go any further with that, I have something for us. Oh. Really? So a little a, treat. What you'll yeah. find is that no you calories go. in here. No yeah. calories no at calories. all. And you know what? I had a, I had a feeling you were going to do something a little decadent. Ooh. So I thought oh. maybe a little port. This is vintage Perfect. port from Portugal, and the 2012 vintage, which is a young one, but mm. absolutely going to go beautifully with oh. chocolate. So. Cheers! 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 Cheers. Look at that! You gotta look in the eyes when you toast. Look in the eyes. Look in the eyes. 
<laughs> they don't serve these at Los Arquitos. No. no. Alas, no. <laughs> so what is it that you get every time you go? The can't miss dish over at Los Arquitos is the super famoso burrito. So it doesn't matter what kind of meat you've got, it's gigantic. It literally looked like the size of my head. Everything was. I ordered yeah. app portions and I was like, this is an appetizer portion. Yeah. Everything was just <laughs> enormous. Huge. Huge. But it, I was I'm grateful much. for it. I had dinner for the next three weeks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a wet burrito. And unlike regular burritos, this has a gravy on it. So it, you have your choice of either the green salsa or the red. And so when I asked the waitress, which one should I get? She goes, I like the red. Uh, and I go, oh, okay. And by, but I also like the green. So, okay, I'll take both. Yeah. And that way I could get a taste of both. I loved it there because I had spent a lot of time in Mexico and I've been looking for the perfect sope. And yeah. they do these sopes. Yeah. It's like on a mini tart. Yeah. Uh, it had the most crunchy and dense sope. Mm -hmm. And then it had pulled chicken on okay. the sope because it has a little bit of the refried bean base. I've not had one better and I've been looking for years. Mm. And when I found out that the owners, they were so authentic from right. Mexico. Right. and The mother and the daughter. All three daughters work at the restaurant. So what else was in the Super Famoso? For mine, I ordered it with shrimp because mm -hmm. it was Lent. So succulent. Oh, it's it was good. was so perfect. Oh, it, was just, it was exactly what I was looking for. Right. Yeah. Well, when we went back, when it wasn't a Friday, then I had the shrimp and carnitas. The carnitas yeah. are absolutely fantastic. Oh, the carnitas, in my mind, it was almost like bacon. Yeah. It was like so crispy. Crunchy, yeah. What did you have? One of the ones that I really loved was the tostada. Uh, and I had the tostada with the carnitas. Everything mm. we had, we had carnitas. I probably should have ordered something <laughs> besides carnitas. It's all right. Yes. <laughs> pork, 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 pork. And what's great about it is it's an open kitchen. The family's in the back. So mm -hmm. you're seeing them. Mm -hmm. And I think what touched me the most was the pride with which the mother served the food. She didn't speak English well, yep. right. but she mm -hmm. hovered over you for a moment to make sure you, everything you were eating was lovely. Right. And I thought, right. I just thought that the pride she had in her, her work right. and her right. food. When we right. ordered the birria, so it's a birria is a stew that's usually served at a wedding or a special occasion. And so okay. it's the stewed meat. Sometimes it's goat, but for this particular restaurant, it's beef. Okay. And so when she served it to us, again, she was beaming with pride as yeah. she put it on the table. And it was just delectable. It just fell apart and it was just delicious. But as we were ooing and aahing, she comes back, she goes, all good? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And what was interesting, you, you know, that was your restaurant and you chose it. Good luck finding it, and right. once you do, you're glad you did. I found it completely by accident. Oh, did you? Uh -huh. Okay. Um, and I'll also mention, just as a tip here, they actually offer half portions. So I could order a variety of things and order just the smaller half portion. It was so great. You have the Spanish TV blaring in the corner. Well, not blaring. Right. You have just these <laughs> dining room tables, like black chairs up to a, you know, a diner table. There was no atmosphere, but that made it such <laughs> atmosphere. Right. Um, and Jess, what about the tamales? I got, of course, the carnitas tamales. Mm -hmm. The carnitas itself in the tamale were different than in the tostada oh, and in the enchilada. Oh. It was more pulled oh, yeah, um, yeah. and more braised. So you yeah. can really taste the cumin in there. Oh. And I really liked the tenderness of it. And this carnitas was pretty lean. Well, the other dish I had was the costillas con nopales. Mm. So that would be the riblets, the pork riblets. Riblets, that are, I like the name of that. Oh yeah, they were falling off the bone, served with cactus. cactus. Oh. So that's, and th they had this chewy texture, but it was delicious. The sauce was so rich that you could taste how long it took to make it and it, you could sop that up with their homemade tortillas so they were handmade there at the restaurant and they were just soft and pillowy and delicious. I've never had cactus so is it slimy uh, at all? Not at all. No, okay. no, 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 no. it's very good. No. good cactus. But what was that dish called? Mm -hmm. Costillas con nopales. All right this is your spot Mar wrap it up for us. Great value. You'll have a meal the following day. This is the place you cannot miss. I almost didn't want to tell you guys about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jess. It's a down-to-earth, family-run, decent Mexican restaurant. If I'm on my way to Tahoe, I'd stop by. Okay, and Maureen? A hole in the wall worth finding, and every bite is authentic and filled with love. I loved it. All right, if you would like to try Los Arquitos Restaurant, it's located on Broadway Street at Nebraska and Vallejo. The telephone number is 707-554-9681. It's open for breakfast through dinner Wednesday through Monday. Reservations are not accepted. And the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $20.
flowers fill the saffron-hued room at Jess's recommendation. Aromas from Grandma's recipes cooking in the kitchen add to the feeling of relaxing in a Persian home. At Lavash Restaurant in San Francisco. My wife and me, we were soccer mom and soccer dad. And I used to have 10, 15, 20 kids in my team. Brought them home, mom has to feed them. And uh, that's how we started developing this barbecue and kebabs to bring it to a restaurant level. My name is Nazila Talai, and my husband Saeed Talai. We are the owners of Lamash. About 11 years ago, we decided to open up a Persian restaurant because we do not have too many Persian restaurants in San Francisco. We both have a passion for cooking. We put a lot of love. We don't call it restaurant. It's like a home, as you can see. It's very small, very cozy. People, they come and they feel really good here. He's in charge of the kitchen. I'm in charge of the floor. We are a very good teamwork, besides the fight we do <laughs> all day. Everything has to be fresh. Otherwise, this food wouldn't taste like the way we want it or the way we eat it. We get our spices from Iran and all over the Middle East. His recipe for the kebabs comes from him. For the stews comes from my side. And this combination makes it perfect. Not only the Persian food is offered here, it's Persian hospitality. And that's part of her job. She brings beauty to everything. That's why I fell in love with her. <laughs> That's nice, my God. So. Wow. You're just so, usually, we don't have this kind of conversation here. All right, Jess, now you are half Persian, correct? I am half Persian, half Italian. <laughs> Great combination. Fantastic. Thank you. Tell us, is this authentic cooking? Is this? It is. And this is really the true deal Persian cuisine. So it's located in San Francisco. It's in the inner sunset. It's a very small, intimate place. And we were seated right next to the window, next to the fireplace. And so it was really nice and cozy. So get this, the corkage fee, only 15 bucks. For exactly. $15, that's a very inexpensive corkage fee. Hopefully you guys got a chance to try the Maso Masir. It's an appetizer. So Maso Masir is a Greek style yogurt. It's really thick and it's made with ground shallots in it. And that is the key to Persian cuisine because you take this sauce and you put it over everything. I think That's we all. did have that because we had the um, almost everything. Try it all? The try it all. Thank oh, you. We did. We tried it all. So. And what did you think of the all that you tried? Well, so okay. okay. The, uh, <laughs> spit it out. Spit it out. Jess won't punch you. I promise. The eggplant on there was fantastic. It was mm -hmm. reminiscent of baba ganoush. It was yep. smooth. It was silky. It was delicious. Yes. yes. But there was this herb cake mm -hmm. and it you could taste the parsley and it was very dry. The her herb cake, if I may say, did taste like a pot brownie without the pot, and I don't smoke pot, <laughs> I don't eat pot brownies, <laughs> but I almost wish I did, because it was like, what's happening? Oh. Yeah. So that's that normally so how dry? it's supposed to be. Okay, okay. Yes. This okay. why. Well, <laughs> so, why? <laughs> I don't mean disrespect. The, the, I just don't understand the it. The way that it's made, um, it's kind of like a sponge cake. Is this the typical flavor profile? It is. Yeah, one member of our party is from Iran. Right. If it's not authentic, he'll be the first one to say something. Tell you. Right. Mm. And he was saying, this is pretty good. I really like when they came to the table with the, instead of bread, they have the nice La cucumber mm -hmm. Ooh, and the bread. Nice. And it's so fresh and it was so yeah. light. And honestly, I should have just stuck with that because right. I don't like yogurt. Do you eat Middle Eastern food very often? Is um, this I don't, you eat? so that's okay. the whole thing. Okay. I don't think I have a taste for it. Okay. But the thing is, I ordered kebabs. Barg, bar. oh, that's bar. my favorite. Yeah. I thought so, but it says kebabs and I didn't see any stick. Am I wrong? Do kebabs come with sticks? Well, that's I... how you cook it. So when yeah. you're actually right. cooking it and you're behind the scenes and you're preparing uh, the food, the there, there is a stick, but you, you have to slide it off, otherwise the stick is actually about this long. Oh, I see. So it probably would stab you. So did you like it? It wasn't my cup of tea. It wasn't your cup of tea. But I want to be respectful because I don't eat Persian food often. Like you're saying, oh, that's a traditional dish or that's how it's done. Like I love your knowledge of it. So you need to go eat with, with Jess. Yeah, you so need I to can go and understand go back that. with Jess. One of the best stews that they do there, something called tadik. Mm -hmm. And tariq yeah. is crispy rice. Yes. So when they're cooking the rice, essentially the bottom of the pan is really, really hard and crunchy. Mm -hmm. And then the normal basmati rice is uh, above it. Um, so you get the tariq part. It is hard, but that's the way it's supposed to be. The beauty of it is you get some of the stew. So the stew we got was called ge me. Now ge me has Say little... Say that now. <laughs> yeah. Gay men. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds similar to okay. that. And when you put that hot, 
gravy consistency stew over this hard tadik, which is really buttery. It's to die for. It's your favorite, I can see. That it's one of my favorites. That is something that, you know, in an Asian household, that's what we fight over. Well, so, in so, paella as well, that's paella, what everybody yeah. wants. So in that paella. is exactly what yeah. we ordered with the mm -hmm. geme. So that was just oh, amazing. I'm so glad you tried that. Uh, we had the taste of Persia, so we didn't want to miss anything. That is so, the, the way to go. You have to get the taste of Persia. It, it okay. had the what burg, it? it had the, the sirloin with, that was <gasps> sliced thinly. Uh, the and, juje? Juje, yeah, and that chicken. I'm sorry, the chicken was a miss. It was so dry, it was so dry. Wow. And then we did try the chicken with the um, the walnuts. That okay. was delicious. So the taste yeah. of Persia was definitely the way to go yeah. because it gives you a variety of everything. It gives you the best of the best of what they actually oh. offer and the price. There was a lamb. It just fell right off the bone. That was the hit. Are you talking about so. the kubide? Kubide, that was it. Mm -hmm. Everyone just couldn't stop grabbing at one person's plate, so yeah. we ordered more. Yeah. But that was just amazing. What has tender. a lot of that saffron in there? Definitely. And so that's, and that's what really it, the leading spice when exactly. you talk about Persian cuisine: saffron, saffron. Oh, we were told a lot of lemon, a lot mm -hmm. of lime, a lot of a sharp tang, and we found that, and it was delicious. What did you uh, think of the service or the oh, drinks I loved or the dessert? Them. I mean, the, the gal and the guy there, the servers, were so fantastic; they couldn't do enough. And uh, they had a baklava, and usually baklava is very thick and dense, and it was lovely and flaky and delicious. Oh, right and what about right saffron tea. tea? That was delicious! <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, it was a very nice tea. But it's authenticity is what yeah. you're saying. This exactly. is really authentic. So if you, you know, have an extensive nice palate and you can appreciate oh. different cuisine, I think that you're gonna love this spot. Yeah. So she's saying I don't have an appreciation. I think so. I'm pretty sure. I think so. to me. <laughs> she's saying go visit with her. Yeah, is what she's saying. With me. I will. <laughs> All right, Jess, this is your spot. Wrap it up for us. Yes. Yeah, so if you're looking for authentic, fresh, true Persian cuisine, this is your spot. Order the Maso Masir, the Barg. Perfect for a date night. All right, and Maureen? Not my Persian cup of tea, but if I were going with somebody half Persian, I think I might find things that I would really enjoy. All right, and Mar? Approachable Persian where you don't have to go across town to get anything. Just right off the end, Judah, and you get your Persian fix. All right, if you would like to try Lavash Restaurant, it's located on Irving Street at 6th Avenue in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-664-5555. It's open for lunch and dinner Tuesday through Sunday. Reservations are recommended. And the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $20. Would you rather have a cola or an espresso? Milk chocolate or dark? If you like things more bitter than sweet, join the club. As one of the main tastes, along with sweet, sour, and salty, Americans are now embracing bitter. Europeans have long known that amaros like Campari or Fernet Branca are not only tasty, but aid in digestion. These are drinking amaros, while bitters, think the ones in small bottles, are meant for mixing in cocktails to add complexity and balance. Created and used as medicines for centuries, bitters are made by soaking roots, berries, herbs, and barks in alcohol, infusing the liquid with bitterness. Famed aromatic brand Angostura is the choice for the classic Manhattan. But with Kraft Bitters production on the rise, you can find versions from Kentucky to Colorado. My personal favorite way to drink bitters is to add a splash to tonic water with a twist. Ugh, oh, delicious. For the first time in Check Please Bay Area's history, we can't bring you the third restaurant on this show. So we're stepping back to a place we visited in season 11 with tech exec Stephen Bellamy. Stephen's pick reflects well-executed, refined, traditional cuisine from the seven hills of Rome. And it's all made perfect by the warm welcome as you enter the Hyde Street location called Seven Hills. Herb Cain, a famous writer for the Chronicle, would reference six hills, but they're actually seven hills in San Francisco. People think that the seven hills relates to Rome. Though there are seven hills in Rome, we're not regional specific. We're really a neighborhood restaurant. If it wasn't for my neighborhood guests, we wouldn't be here. And my name is Alexis Solomon, and my restaurant is called Seven Hills. And my chef's called Anthony Florian and he lived in the Veneto for a while and takes a lot of influences from uh, Venetian cuisine in particular. But again, we are a San Francisco restaurant, so we don't want to get tied down to being just sort of one-dimensional. 
So we can't help but be influenced by the seasonal products that we have local and we're always changing, always evolving. We do have specials that we, we talk to our guests about every day. In a sense, it's a second menu and that gives us lots of artistic license. We're a small, quaint restaurant. It gets pretty lively in here. I would call it intimate dining. The tables are pretty close together. There's no sugar coating there. All the wine on my list, my guys have tried. It's not a list that's fluffy or 10 pages long. I think there's a lot of value on the wine list. I find it very approachable and a lot of wine that I would personally drink if I was at a restaurant. When I have people outside and we're not open just yet, I get excited, I get that, that flurry. I can't believe that they're waiting outside to come into my restaurant. It's a very special feeling. I feel like a little kid. I feel really excited and very humble. I can't describe how, how lucky I am to be here. All right, Stephen, Seven Hills. To me, it's the quintessential San Francisco restaurant. And it's gotten a lot of press and a lot of attention lately. It was a secret when I first started going <laughs> there, and they do just uh, a booming business. It's only 44 seats. Right, so it's, it's small. It's not a big place. The cable car's right out front. There is no parking if either of you had to drive. And when you walk in, you feel like you're in someone's home because mm -hmm. of the intimacy. And also Alex, uh, he is a special person and he makes everyone feel very comfortable. The night we were there, over half the people in the restaurant were regular. <laughs> They have this one dish that's the singular best dish in all of San Francisco, if not the world, and it's called the ravioli. <laughs> Did you guys yes. have it? Okay, <laughs> then you know what I'm talking about. Fist bump, high five, right. hashtag super bomb. <laughs> it is just sublime. Inside this beautiful handmade ravioli is ricotta cheese and spinach and an egg yolk, and they poach that and cook it and then they serve it in this butter sauce. And so when you bite into a corner, you think, oh, that's so good. And then you bite a little closer to the middle and all that yolk oozes out. And if everyone at the table doesn't have a bite, I guarantee you they're gonna take the bread and dip it in, it is just, beyond belief. I'm and sorry during to go on and season, on, During truffle season, you can ask for tri oh, shaved truffles on yeah, top. Yeah, wow. truffles by the table and uh, fresh Parmigiano, uh, Reggiano, right? Ah. We had that dish as well and it was by far my favorite. That dish was, was something to go back for from far, far away. I thought Seven Hills really screamed date night. It's mm -hmm. a small, intimate mm -hmm. place. Uh, it is. It's bustling. It's well. But, it's right, definitely so going on once you yeah, get inside. You get but inside. it's <laughs> absolutely a neighborhood restaurant. It reminds me actually of a lot of restaurants in New York City on some of the side streets. Mm -hmm. We actually had the pappardelle, which was prepared very simply, yet it was so flavorful. It had a spicy red sauce with a little bit of pepper and a little bit of evident tomato in the sauce. We had started with the mozzarella and also the chickpea salad. Th this is also meant to be a compliment. It's a foodie place. Oh yeah. The, the portions are not large, uh, but the flavors are. And uh, for, the, for the person who is educated about food and who understands food, I think that they would really enjoy Seven Hills. It is, it, it rewards the, uh, an understanding of each item on the menu. And they can tell you where every ingredient is from. Absolutely, and, and they did. Um, mm -hmm. They really let the ingredients shine and let the knowledge of the wait staff kind of help our choices to where the uh, meat was butchered, to where the cheese was made. The and Chef Tony is a butcher, actually. Yes, so Here's we heard. Meat. Mm -hmm. We had an amuse-bouche there. Uh, they always uh, uh, give one complimentary, and this night it was an asparagus cream soup, but it was so light and bright, and it had mint in it, and it was just wonderful. We also had a special pasta dish. Their, their pastas are all obviously Incredible. homemade. It might be the specialty of the restaurant, it and they have a whole, whole section dedicated to it. And they're known for their meatballs. I had massive food envy, because we had ordered our appetizer, and the the table next to us meatballs. got the meatballs, and oh. I almost said, can, can I have a bite? Can, just a little bit. It's big enough, stuffed and with fontina it, it, cheese. It, it, it's it's big huge. Enough. Oh, I've had them a hundred <laughs> times. Um, it, they're, they're, that is, so I'm definitely moist. getting it. We, we did the same they're, thing. They're, yeah. they're so like, oh, loose, that. and that sauce they make, just the right amount of sweetness in the yeah. tomato sauce. Loose That's ball. one of my favorite things that I always get. I yeah. want to talk a little bit about what you drank, because meeting Alex, and I'm pretty sure everybody does when you're there, the owner, mm. 
He will walk you through the wine list. It's very well chosen, changes all the time, and really pairs everything with each dish. I think they were so busy, we, d we didn't get poured all the time, and we ended up pouring our own wine, which is obviously not a problem for me, but, um, you know, with l restaurant culture, I know that they would they would prefer to kind of take care of you in that, in that sense. We had phenomenal service. I mean, it was almost embarrassingly over-attentive. <laughs> no one missed a beat. The ambiance is very beautiful, and they've spent a lot of money on that acoustic paneling. You could have a conversation at this level with 40 other people in the room, and, and you don't notice it. All right, this is your spot. Give us a quick summary. Seven Hills is the quintessential San Francisco restaurant. And Bill? If you're a foodie, a date night here is a great night. All right, and praise. Go enjoy the raviolo and have a glass of wine at the bar for a perfect evening at Seven Hills. If you would like to try Seven Hills, it's located on Hyde Street at Pacific in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-775-1550. It's open every night for dinner. Reservations are recommended, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $50. I want to thank my great guests on this week's show, Ma Ronquillo, whose ample burritos provide enough delicious <laughs> leftovers for the next day, at Vallejo's Los Arquitos Restaurant, Jess O'Connor, who invited us into the cozy family-run Lavash Restaurant in the Inner Sunset District of San Francisco, and Maureen Langen for her convivial conversation and company. I'm sorry that we couldn't talk about her favorite eatery. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. So now it's your turn. We want to hear from you if you visited any of our Check Please restaurants. You can post a selfie on Instagram, join the conversation on Facebook, and tweet us anytime. And don't forget to visit our website. All the shows are there, along with my wine videos and notes about the wines we drink on set. You'll also find our fun new web series, Taste This, where we celebrate food and drinks around the Bay. Cheers. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... IRG has in-trend surfaces, quieter marbles, and rare exotics. Over 10,000 slabs in stock today. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin and at marblecompany.com. Mattress Systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. At Adeline and Ashby in Berkeley. Online at sleepworks.com. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Sutter Health CPMC, 7,000 employees, nurses, and physicians caring for their communities every day. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. La Tour Angel Artisan Oils, French-inspired and handcrafted in Northern California. La Tour Angel creates natural, healthy cooking oils that add new flavor to everyday dishes. Total Wine & More offers more than 8,000 wines from around the world and more than 2,500 beers, including hard-to-find seasonal brews and imports. Now open in Mountain View, Pleasant Hill, and Fremont.